Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And we're going to get into some news and prophecy, linking the things that are happening, all right, throughout the whole entire planet Earth. Um, to what the Holy Scripture said, the Bible, I write the volume of the book, okay, um, you know, the uh, Torah, you know, the uh, the law, you know, the prophets, you know, the writings, all right, the Apocrypha, all right, and the, the New Testament, okay, we believe in the volume of the book, okay, and um, as we get closer and closer um, to the end of Esau's world, you're starting to see, you know, the establishment of Satan's kingdom on earth. Okay, if you're looking at things closely, you're starting to see um, evil become normalized and good become demonized on a high level. All right. And what you're witnessing as the Holy Scriptures, uh, you know, describes, you know, Satan and his children on the planet earth you know, are uh, waging a war in rebellion, you know, the biblical Edomites are waging a war against not only the Israelites, but against the most high God, you know, um, and his only begotten son and the angels themselves, you see, and the culture that's being perpetuated and set up in the planet earth is all leading towards Satanism. Okay. And again, as we always tell you, Revelation, the 13th chapter um, is clashing head on with Revelation, the 14th chapter with the devil. All right. Implementing his NWO, which is ultimately Satan's kingdom, <laughs> the image of the beast being established, you know, for eternity through technology, you know, artificial intelligence, science and everything else that he's boasting himself in. You know, uh, synonymously, you have the servants, the prophets who have been sent, who are preaching and prophesying against the image of the beast. OK, the beast himself and his mark. You see, and um, all of the legislation and everything that they're doing on the earth is leaning. All right. Towards them waging war against those who have this testimony. All right. And not, not only are they planning an assault against us. All right. But as you can see here, Space Force boss acknowledges the U.S. will begin facing threats outside of the Earth. So these Edomites know that what they're doing is against the most high God, Yahweh. OK. And when you deal with these uh, Edomites on the left hand, you know, and their uh, masonry and all of that, you know, they believe that there is a higher power okay but their philosophy all right is that we don't have to be in bondage all right to the laws of the most high the order that the most high laid we can do as we will you know so this this devil just like the serpent in a garden seeks to free humanity from the bounds of righteousness setting up a, a system where there is uh no right or wrong and all of these perversions and evil, you know, standards that boast themselves up against the order of Yahweh Bashim Yashai are now the end thing. And then, you know, uh, you know, speaking against what's evil and having a standard in righteousness, you know, that's out, you know, and that's this is the culture that's being perpetuated and set up in the planet Earth. You see now real quick, I'll come back to this. Because this is definitely something we're going to get into. Um, but uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here it goes. Ex-Satanist, ex-witch reacts as Satan kind of arrives. You're starting to see more, you know, uh, Baphomet statues, which the Baphomet statue has, you know, two children, which looks like a, a Gadite and a Judite. OK, why? Why is this satanic, crazy looking figure in front of children? OK. Now, when you when you deal with the Baphomet and Satan, 
you know, it's ultimately a dual sexed deity. You know, uh, it, it it doesn't have a particular sex. You know, which is a rebellion against the order of the most high through his only begotten son laid male and female made he them. That's the religion that you're starting to see be implemented and set up in the planet Earth. You see. Which is a, a clear indicator that a fall is getting ready to happen. You know, they have after school programs where Satan is being, you know, uplifted and taught to children. You're starting to literally see Satan's kingdom be set up in the planet Earth. If you're watching this thing with a spiritual eye. OK, the enemy is waging war right in our faces again, right in your face. You're starting to see the implementation of Satan's kingdom and the Biden administration. All right. Are, are, are key proponents, you know, which was the forwarding of the, the Obama administration. OK, uh, are being used by the elites. OK, to implement this and it all fulfills what the scripture call a spiritual Sodom in Egypt. So now you have Satan con. Let's read it a little bit. Christian leaders are responding to the satanic uh, temples announcement about its public convention, a week, a weekend of blasphemy. OK. And when you read the scriptures. It tells you. OK. It tells you, and let's read the uh, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 14 and 32. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. <laughs> and we do have hope in his death. Okay. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Okay. Now, when you get Revelation, the uh, 13th chapter, the very image of the beast is centered around blasphemy. See? His very image, his 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 coming is after the working of Satan. OK, this beast had upon uh, upon it the names of blasphemy when you get Revelation, the 13th chapter. Now, when you read. In verse six, as is speaking of this beast system. Which today is fulfilled in uh, uh, America, NATO and the EU. All right. Uh, going back, you know, to ancient Rome. All right. The ancient Roman Empire and its vassal states, its subordinate states. OK. And they were blessed with the sword before them. You had the Greeks and all of those societies and empires were built upon blasphemy, idol worship. So this very man's system is rooted in Satanism, which Satan means adversary, adverse, adverse to what? Righteousness. Again, it said he who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And many people are going to get caught in the lies of this so-called white man. So he opened his mouth against the most high to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So he's lied about everything. OK, his very his, again, the, the, his right hand is the right hand of falsehood. His 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 what he deems to be good is evil. Again, we're living in a world. All right, where evil is becoming good. Isaiah 5 and 20, woe to them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light. OK, instead of instead of light, you want darkness. You want people walking in a web of darkness where they're consumed by the lust of the flesh. No order, no bounds, which leads to a chaotic, destructive state. All right. The, the, the actions of the people do destroy themselves. OK, people, everybody's uh, uh, mind is dead set on self-destruct and rebellion to where it's becoming an outcry there. The people are crying to rebel, like even with the the, the uh, baby deletion thing. OK, where women were just going screaming and, and, and boasting in their right, you know, to just de delete. You know, fetus. This is like, well, what, what is what's wrong with you? See, woe to them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. See, woe unto them that are wise in their own ways and prudent in their own sight. You see that? And this this world is being ran 
in a, in a, in a direction and energy of evil. You see? So they're going to have a weekend of blasphemy in Boston. Okay, it says the event is known as SatanCon 2023 will take place April 28th through 30th at the Boston Marriott place. So it says here the official theme all right is Hexenach in Boston Witches Night, an ancient German holiday that occurs annually all right, April the 30th. Okay, which you know that has its roots, all right, in Greco Roman philosophy, which really it goes back to Babylon. It says, in response, Christians are sounding alarms and planning to fight a spiritual battle and push back against the darkness. Now, where's the likes of Vocab Malone and the rest of you Christians who have made it your, your, your religion to now just come after the Israelites? What about Satan? Satan is in the house. Okay, he's coming at the children. He's boasting himself in all different shapes, uh, uh, forms and fashions and ways. But anyway. All right, there's a three day Christian revival scheduled for the same weekend and Christianity isn't is, isn't powerful enough to ward off Satan. You've linked with Satan. You haven't stood for anything righteous now all of a sudden. Okay, you want to you want to have a voice. Well, th they've been doing this this stuff. Where's the outcry with the 2.2 billion Christians? You should see a bigger outcry against this, this evil. Okay. So now the Christians are going to try to, you know, uh, rebut rebuttal it. Okay. And most likely it may be some kind of uproar and, and, and fight. Okay. And again, the Bible is being attacked. This system, this world is attacking the Bible. Again, we just saw. Okay, a uh, a a a, tr uh, <laughs> a transmission. Okay, a a uh, yeah a transmission. All right, who went and shot up a Christian school, right? And America didn't uh, get on the uh, transmission people. They got on Christians because the the transmission person. All right. Uh, the parents didn't want the transition person. All right. The, the, the what the, the transmission person to have that ideology in their household. You 28. OK. Living in your parents houses talking about you. You're not what you were born. So they said to hell with you. Get out. You're not going to do that under our roof. And Christianity was the blame in that situation for that. Uh, a transmission going and shooting up six people. Which we know is all sort of agendas in this stuff, but this is where the world is going, man. And they're becoming more bold about it. It's right in your face. Okay, we're living in a time where, okay, things that used to be highly condemned, okay, uh, they're passing laws and legislations to normalize it. Okay, in Washington, <laughs> Washington State, possession of controlled substances will be legal starting July 1st. And in many, you know, um, cities in the United States, all right, any in, in states, they're uh, giving, you know, drug addicts needles, you know, and, and drugs. I mean, the homelessness is increasing. OK. And a lot of these things that are being brought forth. All right. Or created for what order out of chaos. And this is what the elites want. All right. When you deal at the uh, World Economic Forum, we're living in a time where they're outlawing. OK. Things being condemned. So things that were once condemned, like, you know, pedophilia or sleeping with an animal or. You know, all of these things, we, 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 we have to uh, get control of what we're condemning. OK, and drugs is a part of that. So things are about to get significantly darker. OK, things are about to get crazy now to give you some insight. To um, 
what the uh, World Economic Forum, the elite, are pushing for. Okay, you know, uh, decriminalization. All right, meaning, all right, putting a cap on what we criminalize, uh, you know, criminalize. Okay, because under a democracy, you know, uh, everybody deserves rights. Okay, but again, they're creating order out of chaos. Now, this is off a of redacted United Nations just lost its effing mind with this. All right. And the United Nations is just the elites hidden under a different name. Okay. But again, as they get closer and closer to establishing their NWO, they have to, you know, uh, become more blatant with their uh, what they're doing, who they are, what they, you know, are about. You know, in their fight against the Most High, all right, by Shimmy Awashai. So let's listen to um, this. You know, the United States just, United Nations just lost its effing mind with this. And I'm going to start at about uh, seven and a half minutes. Right. Uh, these these groups, uh, I mean, LGB and the TQIA plus have diverging um, platforms. And we've been making this argument for a really long time. Uh, but they want to make the argument that they are that gay is queer and queer is then something you can apply to all uh, manners of deviance, for lack of a better word. Um, now, the United Nations says that criminalization of sexual practice is unduly leading to torture, arrest, discrimination and removal of human rights. In fact, they say by, you know, criminalizing anything really in general is problematic. Here's their introduction saying criminal law is among the harshest of tools that we have and it ought to be last resort, basically. Like criminalizing everything is last resort. It's bad. It's taking away human rights. Uh and here it is. We're living in a time where they're getting ready to come down with two horns, with, uh, with, uh, as the scriptures say, they came with two horns like a lamb, but they speak as a dragon. You know, they're getting ready to come with all manner of unrighteous decrees and harsh laws. But synonymously, they're saying we can't criminalize, okay, all of these crazy and perverse things that ruin the world. Criminal law is amongst the harshest of tools at the disposal of the state to exert control over individuals. So they're basically allowing people freedom to do as they will all right when it comes to destroying themselves and doing sinful acts but at the same time they're taking away everybody's right to have an opinion about it to speak against these things you see how crazy these devils are you don't have the right to have an opinion against evil all right but we're gonna free up people to have the ability to do evil all right, on any level, all right, and people who have this perspective that these people are wrong, okay, we're going to be able to uh, imprison them, you know, cut them off from the internet, silence them. You see, criminal law is amongst the harshest tools of, at the disposal of the state to exert control over individuals, meaning you know, uh, uh, individuals being banned from doing particular things. Okay. Uh, you know, such as, you know, baby deletions, you know, mutilate you know, a, a five year old cutting off, you know, uh, his private area, <laughs> you know, against his parents wills, his parents will. See, it ought to be a measure of last resort where other less restrictive means of achieving legitimate interest are sufficient. However, globally, states have exhibited a growing trend towards over criminalization. All right. Meaning, all right, particular things don't need to be uh, considered criminal acts. You're seeing a rise in uh, uh, people just going in stores and stealing things. You have particular politicians supporting it. They're with it. So these devils are just absolutely insane, but it's all a snare at the end of the day. Um, this document, which I do recommend you read and let me know how you feel about it. The UN is saying that it's important to be free to express whatever sexual act you'd like and not be, you know, criminalized for it. But it is not your right to not have someone express those acts on you. So if you're the victim of a sex crime, too bad for you. Um, you know, someone else was free to do it. That was their freedom to do it to you. It's not your freedom to not have it done to so you. So this is just going to be like a society full of flashers. 
Right. Yeah, I mean, we're deciding whose rights are more important. The the victims of sex crimes? No, not important. The the sexual perpetrators, their right to do those things is more important than my right to not be abused sexually. Like, when I was a kid, I was at the Berkshire Mall with my friend Ben. I don't know where you're going with this, but I... Well... Oh, yes, I do. And it's an important story. And I've heard this from other boys you know, my age who have had similar stories to this. It's happened to a lot of boys. You know, it's like embarrassing to talk about, but let's talk about it. So my friend Ben and I were at the arcade at the Berkshire Mall in Reading, Pennsylvania, our favorite arcade. And we were out in the food court area going to the bathroom. And this uh, old, this guy, and we're like, I don't know, young. So we're like, you listen to uh, authority figures. I thought he was a security guard. I didn't know what he was. And he's like, you know, come over here, guys. And, and <clears throat> I don't know what he was doing. He waved us to the bathroom. And then he wanted to like try to show us stuff, if you know what I mean. And we both were like, let's get out of here. And we like hightailed it out of there. And we ran out. We did not go back to the arcade. And then we ran and looked, looked for a security guard. We told them what had happened. And the security guards were like, Psh, let's go right now. Like, and they mobilized to like, go find this creeper. You know? And I don't know if they ever found the guy. But um, Well, that was a human rights abuse to him. And you have all of these these crazy freaks running around. But see, they're, they're getting ready to have the right to be this way. And they already do. If you look at what uh, the Biden administration, who they're protecting and who's getting rights is these people all right now i wanted to jump to this part to go along with that article i just had drug use. um the u.n thinks that no drug use should be criminal here is uh, their bit about that not possession not purchase not use um not holding any of these kids not seeking out uh, health services for drug use nothing about drug use should be um policed so it is not only your right to do drugs it is not your right to live in a drug-free place Meaning if you live in a neighborhood ripped apart by drugs and violence, too bad for you. There should be no law enforcement or government trying to make that not the case. Now, again, I want to refer to Michael Schellenberger's book, uh, San Francisco. He talks about how when you do not criminalize drugs, you end up with a lot of people dying on the street. That's their right, I guess, um, according to the UN. It's not your right to live in a place where people don't die on the streets of drugs. In fact, in one study, he found that if you do not force people to get clean, but you just give them houses, they do stay in the homes for the duration of the housing experiment. But the twist in this data, and this was done in San Francisco, is that giving people houses did not reduce the rate of deaths because they were allowed to continue to be on drugs. They just were in a house. There were 37 deaths out of the 199 participants in the control group and 33 deaths out of the 224 in the experimental group. And so it was so surprising that people who are not asked to get clean don't get clean and just die in a more comfortable place. They still die. They just maybe die slower or they die inside instead of outside. Um, is this the outcome the UN wants just to let people OD themselves to death as a human right because of body autonomy? Um, and the resulting communities where people live and then have to, you know, be addicted to drugs, well, yeah, they say you should be able to poo and pee on the street because, you know, you've cultivated this drug addiction, possibly sex addiction too, and you should not be criminalized for uh, engaging in life-sustaining economic activities in public places, such as begging and panhandling, um, vending, hawking, or other, you know, like, uh, even hawking or other informal commercial activities involving non-contraband items, or engaging in life-sustaining activities in public places like sleeping, eating, preparing food, washing clothes, or it says even urinating and defecating in other public spaces. Uh, it sure does seem to me like the UN is in favor of social collapse, does it not? So I, that's what I want to ask. Exactly. That's exactly what they're into. And if you read this, <laughs> all right, no one may be he held criminally liable for engaging in life-sustaining ec uh, economic activities in public places such as begging, panhandling, trading, touting, vending, hawking, all right, or other informal commercial activities from uh, contraband items for engaging in life sustaining activities in public places such as sleeping, eating, preparing food, washing clothes, sitting or performing hygiene related activities, including washing, urinating and defecating. All right. Or for other. All right. Anagolis. All right. Uh, activities in public places where there is no adequate alternatives available. So you can just shit on the ground, piss on the ground, beg, steal. Okay, so they're setting up economic collapse. Okay, that's what they're doing. You're going to have all of these people drugged out. They're going to have guns <laughs> because they're, they're giving people guns without permits now. Okay. It's going to be a lack of resources. So what is this setting up? Total chaos, man. That's exactly what it's setting up. It sure does seem to me like the UN is in favor of social collapse, does it not? So I, that's what I want to ask you here at the end of this, which is, again, when you see a story like this, you're like, oh, my God, they're, these progressives are ruining everything. They're, do, they're driving us into the ground. But maybe I ask you this. Isn't it part of the plan? Because if you think about what the World Economic Forum wants, they don't want us to work. 
out of the house. They want us to work from home. Right. You're, 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 this is the theory of like why they're doing this on purpose. Right. Are they doing it on purpose? And that's what I'm just I'm throwing it out there. Like, because why? It's scary to leave the house. You want to go down the street in Chicago right now and go get a burger? You know, watch out for Jesse Smollett. You, you walk all the, the people that are walking down the street right now in, in Chicago, oh, you know, in San Francisco, if you want to do that, because I can work from home. I don't have to commute. I can stay. I can, you know, I can do all of this remotely. Um, I can have everything taken care of for me because it's scary out there. And this is a way to sort of force us more inside. I suppose. Well, <laughs> That's if you, I don't know, Natalie, when you were in San Francisco, if you drove by the Tenderloin District, but if you drive over in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco, this is pretty much what they have done. They have made drugs legal. They give them paraphernalia. They give them everything they need, and people are just, like, yeah. laying on the streets. They're breaking in and stealing stuff. Like, that's – but nobody is doing anything about it. They've removed police power. They've removed all the things that can keep people from doing that. And so there's a reason that they're doing that. So it obviously has to be what some of these people want. Otherwise, they would be doing something about it. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of theories about why. Uh, what Michael Schellenberger calls the homeless industrial complex because there is a lot of money, competing money, government money, your money, uh, going around to different competing organizations. And there's law enforcement, and then there's homeless uh, advocates, and there's they don't work together. And you know they are incentivized to not solve this as a problem. Why would the United Nations want this to feed into the homeless industrial complex? Why would they want to dehumanize human bodies to the point that it would be socially acceptable to have consensual sex with a 10-year-old? I don't know. I mean, this feeds into sort of my theories about transhumanism. It's just like break down the entire human experience in order to what, what, I mean, that's, that maybe seems like a leap. I don't know. Uh because they're bringing in their NWO. Okay. And really what it is also, all right, this is uh, Isaiah 19 and 14. It says the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in his own vomit. You see, the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit. And you, if you look at all of the things that are, uh, you know, uh, uh, being perpetuated, okay, in this world, it's getting significantly bad, okay? We're living clearly in Sodom and Egypt. California begins arresting parents who oppose, all right, child, all right, surgery, okay? And... These are the times we're living in. Again, it's going to get more and more dark. And this is the thing, you know, that the apostles and elders warned of. And, you know, us brothers who entered into their labors, the bishops as well. All right. Us entered into their labors. We uh, this is what they told us would come. OK, California has announced plans to begin arresting and imprisoning parents who dare to question these surgeries. OK, it says, um. SB 596, written by Senator Anthony, all right, uh, this guy, Portanet, Port, Portanito, or whatever, will address the issue of teacher facing harassment and aims to provide a safe and inclusive environment for all students and teachers. It will so do by abolishing the First Amendment rights for people who oppose radical, all right, trans ideology. The proposed law states that any person who su subjects a school employee to threats or harassment while the employee is away from a school site or after school hours for reason related to an employee's course of duties will be fined all right, as much as $1,000 in jail for up to one year. So these draconian measures are getting ready to come down. OK, and it starts, you know, with them using the alphabet people because you know once you know the uh the uh sexes the the sexual lines are blurred all right then any is it's easy to you know implement all forms of rebellion and evil okay to create the perfect chaotic situation okay and then synonymously you'll be able to imprison those who have an agenda or a thought process against it it says all right. They report what constitute harassment would be determined by far left judges. All right. People, people like, you know, Biden's cabinet, they'll, they'll be the ones. All right. That are, are going to determine what is right and wrong and what's harassment or what, you know, makes them you know feel bad. And then you'll be fined or in prison if you break it. It says. What constitutes harassment will be determined by far left judges, prosecutors and bureaucrats who are in the back pocket of groomer industrial of the groomer industrial complex. Of course, harassment is defined in the bill as a knowing and willful course of conduct directed at a specific person that seriously alarms, annoys or harasses the person. All right. 
and that serves no legitimate purpose. A statement from the bill's author also implies that the legislation will be used to come after individuals on social media, all right, who make comments exposing, all right, transmission indoctrinators. Okay? So eventually, if we know that's coming at us, teachers are being intimidated and harassed for doing their jobs, all right? Uh, he says, all right? SB 596 will ensure that educators can safely continue to be educators, helping their students thrive. All right. All right. Unencumbered by fear and intimidation. I am very grateful to the teachers of my district, to the commitment of to our children and for bringing the needs for this bill to my attention. Big League Politics has reported extensively about alphabet predators in schools who are preying on the souls of children with a demonic propaganda. Okay. It says a whistleblower has exposed how teachers and administrators in public schools are plotting to set up rainbow clubs. All right. <laughs> for these. All right. G.A.Y. straight alliance groups in order to groom children and indoctrinate them into the alphabet agenda. And see, that's happening right before your face. This is Satan's agenda. OK, this is clearly Satanism. The Lord has what mingled a perverse spirit in the midst of this place. OK, and now they're doing it. Di they're coming directly at the children like the uh, elder brother Ari Naza did a video all right, we got to get the hell out of here. We can't raise our children in a place like this. All right, and as this article keeps going on and on, okay, but this is uh, giving uh, light to a prophecy that we would be in a spiritual Sodom in Egypt. All right, and within that Egypt, the Lord would mingle a, a perverse spirit, okay, in the midst of this place. They're setting it up to where it won't be any uh, uh gender in the new world in the new age and it starts with the children and this is why they're going so hardcore at the children with this agenda okay because you know the by the time they they have it in their mind by the time it's said and done okay they're going to be able uh, the, the 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 generations to come all right will fully be indoctrinated with this agenda OK, and this is what they're doing. OK. <laughs> this is off of uh, my Northwest dot com. It says rants, radical. W.A. trans youth law legalized state sanctioning kidnapping. All right. It says Democrats have effectively legalized state sanctioned kidnapping while pretending to save children from abusive families. With one single trans youth law, Democrats, all right, uh, usurped parental rights, and parents don't have rights anymore. Okay, it says, and they uh, uh, and they intend to break up families that don't pretend, all right, uh, don't parent the way they would. This is the most dangerous and extremist bill that Democrats have ever passed. All right. Yet they, they're in their news. They're they're going after so-called radical extremists. But this 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 isn't radical. <laughs> it says SB five five nine nine sponsored by far left state senator Marco Leas permits shelters and host homes to provide. Housing for runaway minors. OK, <laughs> and what do you think they're going to do with those minors? All right, and it's all got under the, the 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 transmission guys. So if a child is rejected by their parents, okay, they can run to these particular homes and shelters that they have set up for these people. And what do you think is going to happen to them there? Okay, it says though the current law requires parental notification of the whereabouts of runaway children. This will consider merely seeking so-called gender affirming care. A compelling reason to not notify parents of the children's whereabouts. 
Under the state's care, the child can undergo s- surgical invention- interventions like uh, mastectomy and facial feminization without parent consent. It just passed the House the House in a party line vote, and now it heads back to the Senate where it's expected to pass. Okay. The microaggressions, the language of parents. I, I really wish more parents had the skills that the parents who are in this room talking about how they would want to affirm their children, but say. But this is the black woman, right? She 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 backs a bill giving transmission kids surgeries without parental consent because they may hear microaggressions and run away from home. No, I wish more parents had that. But when I see a young person come to me on a regular basis saying, I can't go home, home is not safe. Am I not going to do something? Are we not going to do something? Am I gonna let them stay out on the street homeless at risk at risk to being picked up by somebody who will say all the right things and make them do all the wrong things am i going to risk this child being in the middle of the cold not knowing whether they're going to have somewhere to go tonight all because they can't go home to a place where we don't know what those threats are going to actually be. I tell you, there are some unhealthy family dynamics out there. And that child, that child wants to go home, wants to see the love from their parent. They just need some way to communicate better with their parent. Their parent needs another way to speak to this child to get them through the toughest parts of their life. We must step in. We must provide a place for this child. Mr. Speaker, I... And see how it's all predicated upon playing on the emotions of people. Okay? But this is where the world is going. Now, going back here, let's see if I have any more. Oh, yeah. The Planned Parenthood Communications Director commits suicide after police launch child porn investigation uh, into him and raid his apartment building. All right, Tim uh, Yergo, <laughs> 36, took his own life, 36, <laughs> took his own life uh, days after a botched police raid con- in connection with child pornography at his New Haven, Connecticut home. All right, he had been working as a marketing and communications director at the Lone Wharf Theater, where he pre- uh, and previously worked for Planned Parenthood. Look at this. Look at this damn devil. Look at him. And these 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 demons are in all of these positions, you know, dealing with, and with these organizations and, you know, act like they care about children and, you know, and this is what they're into. <laughs> so he offed himself once they caught him with all of this. Look at this crap, man. Yeah, these devils got to go, man. They got to be taken down. Okay. Yeah. Safe to say he went to hell. <laughs> His spirit went back to the spirit world, but he's going to come back in the, in the kingdom. Okay. Um, you know, uh, eventually uh, as a, as a, as a two thirds Edomite. Okay. We're going to have the elites <laughs> in a special kind of captivity. All right. And then you, uh, the rest of you Edomites will just be two third Edomites. Okay, you're going to be a complete vagabonds. Okay, and then after the a thousand year period, you you will be evicted and chased out of the world because look at what you're doing. Look at the society you set up. You don't deserve to uh, be able to um, uh, 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 be in the kingdom after that a thousand year period. Now, here's another uh thing i was checking out uh uh, tucker carlson was ousted because we know he just got fired from fox news if you didn't know tucker carlson just got fired 
But insiders are saying it's because he recently he's been doing speeches and talking about God and Christianity too much. And the powers that be, all right, uh, you know, told him to stop and he didn't want to stop. You know, so you're having a lot of division amongst these devils. All right. But pretty much, as you can see here, it says a source told Vanity Fair that the primary reason for Tucker Carlson being ousted by Fox News was because he gave a speech on Friday night. All right. And he talked about spirituality and prayer, something that freaks uh, Rupert Murdoch out. All right. Yes, really. Fox News announced on Monday that Tucker and and the network will be parting ways, although he apparently remains on the payroll and has not been technically fired. In the two days since, Fox News refused to specify precisely why he was let go, prompting speculation as to the real reason. Vanity Fair reports that Tucker's speech at the Heritage Foundation's 50 anniversary gala three days before the uh, was the final straw during a speech Carlson talked about how the situations was beyond debate and that the battle for America was between a war between good and evil okay characterized by the bitter tussle over all right uh, transmissionism in 187 you can see the two names right there the 187s is these things okay <laughs> All right. The uh, it says we should say that uh, we should say that and stop engaging in these totally fraudulent debates. I've tried. That doesn't work, Sir Carlson. I have concluded it might be worth taking just 10 minutes out of your busy schedule to say a prayer for the future. And I hope you will. And I've seen that speech. OK. According to Vanity's Fair Source, that stuff freaks Rupert Murdoch out, that devil. He doesn't like all the spiritual talk. Okay? Fox Corp Chair Rupert Murdoch reputedly, reportedly removed Tucker Carlson from the air over religious remarks host made during a uh, speech Friday night. And here's the speech. I pulled it up. I'm going to play an excerpt from it. And uh, play uh, a few other things as well because free speech, you know, um, is getting ready to be a thing of the past. It's going to lead to famine of the word. And um, as you can see, they're using the concept of the transmission community and this and that and how Christians say it goes against God to say that the Bible and belief of God is outdated and it's harming you know, um, the freedom and civil liberties of all of the, the people and who do they use to attack the speech against it, all right, the nasty people. Anyway, um, this uh, video, which this is just some of the speeches called Tucker Carlson Mocks Herd Mentality and Addresses uh, Delivered Three, uh, and Address Delivered Three Days Before Sutton Fox News Departure. Okay, so let's listen to um, an excerpt from it, and uh, we'll get a few other things as well. Remember, every part of our politics revolved around that central conflict. That's the first lesson in history. You know, nothing is permanent except our own demise and God. But we didn't kind of get that. He said nothing is permanent but God. And without throughout the speech, he mentioned God many times. You see, on Fox News, he was mentioning God. And... Um, you have to understand these particular uh, journalists, you know, they go to the, these schools, um, they get jobs and they eventually make it to the top only to find out that these mainstream media platforms are controlled. A lot of what they want to say is uh, rejected. Now, you can see for a time, you know, Fox News used him and particular talking points because they saw that the mainstream media you know, agenda got played out. People stopped watching it. So Fox News took from the red pill and these particular talking points, even from the Israelites, all right? And we know that they created this whole left-right, you know, uh, dual. Fox News represents the uh, right, okay? The uh, traditional mindset, you know, a, a republic, you know, um, 
and everything that so-called America was supposed to be founded on, st standing for those principles which they're moving towards a new world. So again, they're using the two sides to create friction so that they can bring uh, bring an uh, order out of the chaos. But as you can see, you know, right, he said that God is permanent. Now this guy here, I remember walked up to the apostles. Okay, so he knows about us. All right, but let's just keep listening. You know, if you told me then that this week the Department of Justice would have indicted a group of people, people I don't agree with, by the way, on a lot of different issues, black nationalist socialists from Florida, okay, kind of not my demographic, but would have indicted them for criticizing the U.S. position, the Biden administration's position on the war in Ukraine and charged them with felonies. For which they're... All right, so some black nationalists were charged with felonies for criticizing the Biden administration. You're starting to see more and more laws creep up. OK, um, even this thing with the TikTok ban that have ultimately you uh, like our talking points when we go into prophecy, we say, you know, Russia is going to do this. We're saying that NATO is, you know, um, warmongering over, you know, and this is a farce. And, you know, ultimately the, the powers that be are behind it all. You know, it's all a stage, you know, but this and this and that, you know, they can take that as, well, you're supporting the enemy. You're committing treason. And now they're starting to uh, prosecute and lock people up behind their talking points. What Tucker Carlson is saying here is that I never thought that I would see the day that America went here. So in this speech, he kind of was going in. All right, let's keep listening. He's facing 10 years in prison. If you told me that could happen here, I would have laughed at you. No, we have a First Amendment. That can't happen here, but it, it has. That and a lot of other things, which are gravely unsettling, actually, and people who who were rooted in the, the Cold War story and the reality of the Cold War, again, my age, 53, kind of know where that goes. So the purpose of my talk, which I, by the way, I will keep brief, I'm an inveterate talker, I can literally talk forever. You can't even imagine my capacity for loquaciousness. I mean, it just, it has no, and it's a bottomless well. You know, if you dropped a quarter off the observation deck of the Empire State Building, how long would it take to hit the sidewalk? That was always what we talked about when we were kids. You would never hear it. In my case, I can literally go on first. So I will stop and Kevin and I are going to have a conversation so they'd be much more edifying. But I would just say two things about the present moment because I, I think about them all the time and I brood on this constantly. And then I take every afternoon because fundamentally I'm Swedish, I take a sauna every day. As a, as a rest, I do, I'm not kidding, every single day. I never miss it. And my whole family does. As a re it's like our one cultural contribution. Oh, we're Swedish. Ooh, it's a very deep ethnicity. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, of Swedish traditions. You should hear our comedy. It's hilarious. Um, but the one thing I do is take a sauna to kind of get out of my head and get away from all this stuff. And I never can. And I just use my time in the sauna to brood more. But here are two conclusions I've come to, which I think are slightly less depressing than the most obvious, which is the country's really going at high speed in the wrong direction. Yeah, no kidding. Like in ways that are just unfathomable. And, and for people, my father's age, for example, who's 82 and such a decent man. And I might be going forever about my dad, who I saw this morning. Um, you know, was just born in an orphanage called the Home for Little Wanderers in Boston and became a success in the head of a federal agency and served in the Marine Corps and sort of lived the America that you imagine is possible for people who are smart and try hard and all that. For, for people of that age, it's, it's too much, actually. The change is too high. I would say two things that are, I think, we're thinking about. The first is, is you look around and you see so many people break under the strain, under the downward pressure of whatever this is that we're going through. And you look with disdain and sadness as you see people you know become quizlings, you see them revealed as cowards, you see them going along with a new, new thing, which is clearly a poisonous thing, a silly thing, you know, saying things you know they don't believe because they want to keep their jobs. If there's a single person in this room who hasn't seen that through George Floyd and COVID and the Ukraine war, raise your hand. Oh, nobody, right, you all know what I'm talking about. And you're so disappointed in people. You know, you are, and you realize that the herd instinct is maybe the strongest instinct. I mean, it may be stronger than the hunger and sex instincts, actually. The instinct, which again is inherent to be like everybody else and not to be passed out of the group, not to be shunned, that's a very strong impulse in all of us from birth. And it takes over, unfortunately, in moments like this, and it's harnessed, in fact, by bad people in moments like this, to produce uniformity. And you see people going along with this, and you lose respect for them. And that's certainly happened to me at scale over the past three years. I'm not mad at people, I'm just sad, I'm disappointed. How could you go along with this? You know it's not true, but you're saying it anyway? Really, you're putting your pronouns in your email? You're ridiculous. You know, but no one else thinks it's ridiculous. Oh no, it's pronouns in the email. What does that even mean? And you could keep listening, but he's going in and most likely a call was made. OK, and he lost his job at Fox, which many of these people who, you know, are leaving mainstream media are going to other platforms. You know, some making YouTube pages and uh, boom, opening up 
on how they really feel. Okay, so the attack is going to be against you Christians as well. A lot of you Christians better buckle up and prepare, all right, for this world coming down on you because a lot of you haven't been rooted in anything but coming against the Israelites or this mythical Jesus character who loves everything, all right? Well, y'all better strap up your boots because the, the, this world is coming after y'all as well, and y'all going to be like a shield for the Israelites. Now, also, as the scriptures say, Isaiah 59, he who um, standeth for truth maketh himself a prey, okay? Um, I wanted to play this video here, okay, on the famine of the word, okay? Check this out. So, uh, you know, I'm Tucker Carlson of the United States for my American uh, viewers and those of you outside the United States who have probably seen clips of this. Tucker Carlson, uh, who is a broadcaster on Fox News, and he's actually the only broadcaster on any of the legacy media who is trying to tell the truth about the things that are going on around the world. Well, he was deeply troubled by the fact that this, um, there's this group of, of um, African Israelites, I think they are. It, it's this crazy ass group of guys who are African American who believe all kinds of nonsense. I mean, they're just like really out to lunch. And a lot of the things that they believe in are kind of outrageous and or despicable, you know? But the Biden administration is persecuting them because of free speech, because of shit that they have said. Mm -hmm. and, and like little posters that they put up here and there that mean nothing. I mean, they're just like a little radical, crazy ass outfit that has zero political impact, although they are fairly noticeable. But you know, they're more like an amusement, really, than anything else. I mean, you hear him? Now, this is uh, also the off of the Gon Gonzalo Lira channel. And you see those nervous laughs, you know, because, uh, again, uh, 20, you know, 2023 going into 2024, if we're still here, which is possible we may still be here. Um, they're going to make their move against the Israelites. OK, and Tucker Carlson, as you just um, heard was like, you know, even though I don't agree with these people, basically they don't have a free speech to say what they want to say. Okay, so that famine of the word is coming. But you see all of these laughs, you know, they're, they're mocking out, they're, 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 you know, stupid, yada, yada, yada. Yet the Biden administration is going to address us. That's why you see all of this transmission talk, because they know our talking points are strongly against that agenda. OK, so again, the, 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 the biblical aspect is going to be tied to it all. You see them show, uh, slowly but surely tying everything together. And I myself and all of the, uh, the brothers have kept a, a, a close eye and keeping you updated on how they're going to link this all to the Israelites. OK, we, we, we've constantly, uh, through, to the best of our ability, made sure to keep you updated on that so that you can be aware of where you are. And the times we're coming into, okay, we're, we're in those times, you know, like Yahweh Shai had to go through his sacrifice and he was, you know, heavy in the spirit, you know, going through, you know, torment in his mind, knowing what he was going to have to go through. Well, again, that straight gate is upon us. Uh, we're going to be on the news. We're going to be what? They're going to use their technology, the deep fake, you know, they're going to, you know, they have the artificial intelligence technology to take your voice and, um, make it to, to to say anything they wanted to say and it's your actual voice brothers are going to be you know um persecuted indicted on charges of treason and you know coming up against this this left hand wicked agenda because the nwo is ultimately satan's kingdom being set up on the planet earth so everything that the bible stands for and everything that nature stands for is going to be what demonized uprooted okay let's keep playing this though I take them seriously but the Biden administration is persecuting these people because of their speech they haven't done anything they haven't like burned down a building like Black Lives Matter did back in 2020 oh no these guys they just they give their little speeches and their little bullshit and their little pamphlets and that's it and the fight see and eventually you're going to start to see fake Israelite groups who are in league with Satan, you best believe there's particular groups um, that are, you know, uh, you know, particular groups who are sincere and, and teaching, but there may be agents amongst them. All right. And then you have whole groups altogether who were just 
offspring of the uh, CIA set up to go out and teach. And they've probably been teaching for years and they're going to do something. OK, that's how it's going to start, you know, and get sparked all off. They're going to do something, um, you know, whether it be burning down something or something crazy um, that's going to jumpstart, you know, the them having to deal with us and bring us up more in the news. OK, and then the talking points against the agenda that they're trying to establish is going to be used as a means to say we have to stop this speech. So the famine of the word is coming. OK, listen to him again. Back in 2020. Oh, no, these guys, they just they give their little speeches and their little bullshit and their little pamphlets. And that's it. And the Biden administration is persecuting them using the federal government to shut them down. Now, Tucker Carlson has been talking about this quite a bit. And, and with good reason, because this is the epitome of freedom of speech, to say something stupid and outrageous that most everybody disagrees with, but okay, fine, you do you, kind of thing, right? So this is where we are, okay? So um, you could check out this speech, but again, as uh, we told you, the Lord has mingled a very perverse and, and, and wicked spirit here in uh, the midst of Egypt, Okay. Uh, people are losing their damn minds. As a matter of fact, let's get this in uh, the book of uh, Second Edges six and twenty three. It says, "And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man hear it, they shall be suddenly afraid." And that's the prophets. That's the, the these words going out and coming to pass. Because just as they're mocking and laughing, all oh, these stupid Israelites. All right, they're listening. All right, and they don't think their kingdom is ever gonna fall. So they try to laugh it off. First they ignored us, then they laughed at us. Now the attacking point is coming. Okay, so this is why you see a lot of this alphabet agenda being thrown out there in the narrative that they're the biggest victims in the world and they're tying it to biblical principles as to why they're victims because people who believe in the Bible ain't with it. Okay, you just saw Tucker Carlson suffer the fate of, of being cut off. Donald Trump used the Bible in his... Uh, uh, you know, uh, rhetoric, you see, and a lot of these talking points of these right wingist can be tied to the Israelites. We have told you and showed you. So people are afraid. Great fear has fell upon the biblical Edomite because of the rays of the, the, the true Israelites. See, and what we're saying is leading to things happening on the earth. It says, and at that time, friends shall fight one against another like enemies, People, these people are full of drugs. Drugs are legal now. They can't demonize any wicked behavior. Okay, so people, as you can see, are losing it. All right, ain't no love in the streets. All right, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. And whomsoever remaineth from all these things I have told thee shall escape. And see my salvation in the end of your world. So again, the, 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 the spring of fountains, which is the truth, shall stand still. And in three hours, they shall not run. Okay, because again, there's going to be a famine of the word. Let's get that. Okay, there's going to be a famine of the word. I believe that's Amos, the either the eighth chapter or the fifth chapter. Let's see here. Come on, man. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Hearing the words. Yeah, Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will send a famine. All right. That I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor of, uh, of, of thirst for water which that's coming, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You see? And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord, and it shall not be found. Okay? <laughs> and that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. People are going to be hurt. You see? People are going to be hurt. Okay? It's going to be a famine of the word. It's coming. Okay. The scriptures talks about how the prudent are going to be silent in that day. <laughs> okay. Wise counsel. Let's see here. 
the wise counsel ain't going to be out here. So you people are going to be left to your own devices and all of that pride. Okay, yeah. Amos 5 and 13. Amos 5 and 12. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe. And they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. This is Jake's mindset. Jake oppresses their own. Okay, so to, to where Esau really needs to just has all he has to do is sit back and watch you. The Lord is watching you niggas, man. Especially you, you, you nigger Israelites. See? Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time. For it is an evil time. The day, the, 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 the times of evil are here. And the Lord has sent the servants, the prophets out to give you warning. You see? He sent the servants, the prophets out to give you warning, but 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 you didn't want to hear. You didn't want to adhere to it. Seek good and not evil. This world is going complete evil. Why why are our people still into this world? That ye may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good. And establish judgment in the gate. See? And this is what the Heavenly Father has sent the righteous man in great boldness to do in these latter days. Synonymously, you have the likes of Tucker Carlson, <laughs> other heathen standing up. So there's a spirit. All right. Against this evil NWO that's being established right before our eyes, which we showed you just a few aspects of what it's doing. It's breaking down gender get, uh, lines. It's breaking down family structure. It's giving uh, the, uh, the go-ahead for all manner of abominations to be freely practiced without the uh, notion of correction. This is basically what Nimrod did. He created many wide paths of, of destruction for people to follow after in rebellion against the Heavenly Father. All right. But at the same time, what he was trying to establish was the first world order to where he would be the most high God. OK. And everybody else would be under his rule and dominion through playing on their lust. And that's what these democracies always have done. They play on the lust of the people. They guarantee you all of these rights using the, the, the most valid people. Using Jake, pandering Jake and, 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 and making Jake to believe all of these agendas are for, are for them. So all for the back of black rights and civil black rights and black lives matter comes all of these perversions and all of these people marching for all of their perversions and their rights. OK, and you have a breakdown of society. And boom, the rest is history. All right. It leads to what a uh, uh, the uh, tyranny democracies always lead to tyrannies okay and this is what we've told you they've, they've duped you and tricked you anyway hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate so to establish judgment you have to recognize what is evil and call it out is it, okay let's get psalms 45 and 7 real quick Psalms 45 and 7. Lo thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. You see? Now, we've been anointed to come out and do this, uh, this, 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 this beautiful work here in these latter days, man. Okay, and this is speculation, but it makes sense. OK, because when you look at Fox News, they've been, you know, the, talking a lot about God and, and, and the way that the world is going and how it goes against the most high. But th this shows you that that the powers that be are at war. All right. With this word. OK, at war with Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, at war with natural order, at war with nature. OK, and that pretty much gives, you know, a. Uh, uh, as, you, as it reads here in Luke 17 and 28, likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. OK, meaning they were totally engulfed in the flesh. All right. But the same day Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man is revealed. See, so before Yahweh returns. We're going to find ourselves in the same situation Lot was in. 
in the same situation Nahum was in, okay, and so forth, okay. Uh, the, the all of these various different perversions are boasting themselves, and the people are totally engulfed in their flesh, all right, and they don't know that ultimately their soul is being given over, all right, to the beast as a sacrifice. Okay, these people are far gone. Okay, and the powers that be, as the scripture said. Okay, Exodus, the 17th chapter. Again, this is the time before the, the flood. Okay, things were significantly bad. All right. And everybody's mind was dead set on rebellion. Exodus 17 and 16, for he said, because the Lord have sworn the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. All right. And the Amalekites are the small hats, the ones who are in the land saying that they are the people. All right. Or or in a portion of the land. OK. And here it is. <laughs> Everything that they're doing is an assault against the Heavenly Father. All right. And it's going to turn into <laughs> uh, a war against us. OK. Because we have the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. And this is where uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter, okay, this red dragon, which is synonymous with the uh, ancient Roman Empire, all right, would have a revival. And in the latter days, Revelation 12 and 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. See, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All right, why are they going to make war with the remnant? Because the remnant have the testimony, all right, against the evils of this world, okay? In order to testify, you have to what? Be a witness. And the Heavenly Father has given us witness through the Holy Spirit sent through Yahweh Shai that these things are evil. He's given us the understanding of prophecy, so as we're out here preaching and, and bringing out all of these points and telling you that the way that the world is going is evil. These devils are preparing war with the remnant. See, because of the commandments we're keeping go against this, this world. Again, at the time of Maccabees, when Antiochus came down hard, you weren't able to circumcise your child. You weren't able to read out of the scrolls. These times are upon us where the Bible is getting ready to be outlawed right in your face. We're witnessing it. And to have 2.2 billion Christians. OK, uh, the, there's no real big outcry from the Christian community. Where are the black preachers? Where where is the world? OK, you should see more of a uh, of, of a of an opposition. All right. Using the Bible from the uh, uh, these people. But you don't. You see, so what the the uh, the the powers that be are doing is they're raising up their own Christian outcry, which some of it is actual people who you know, in their in their mind really believe in God and you know really standing for these principles. But a lot of it is controlled opposition. Either way, it's going to be used to come up with an uh, accusation against Bible believers. Okay, again, Revelation, the 13th chapter versus Revelation, the 14th chapter. So they're going to make war with the remnant of the seed. Okay, and the Bible also describes in this very chapter as, you know, Revelation jumps in and out of uh, prophecy in different times. Revelation 12 and 7, and there was war in heaven. Okay, I remember some uh, weirdo said the war in heaven was a debate. OK, no, the, the, when Yahweh Shah returns, these devils are going to fight against him. Michael and his angels, which Michael means he who was like the most high. All right. Michael, the archangel is a high ranking member of Yahweh Shah's army. OK, and he's going to be given a command. OK, under Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for a big work in the deliverance of the Israelites. See, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels and they prevail not. So Esau's going to lose. But as you can see, everything happening on earth <laughs> as we were um, looking at goes back to a war with the most high by Shimei Shai. 
from the culture being set up, from the propaganda being laid, from the space force, from artificial intelligence, the haragma itself, it's all to fight against the truth. It's all to establish a NWO in a left hand kingdom. All right. Based upon the principles of Satan. You see, and now they have the technology and, you know, everything else that they need to finally get it done. OK, and we know what the scriptures say. So Space Force boss acknowledges the U.S. will begin facing threats outside of Earth. Why? Why are they going to face threats outside of Earth? Because of the evil that they're doing. And again, they know. That the, 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 the chariots are there, as a matter of fact, on the uh, two through channel, let's see if I can pull that up. My other channel, if y'all haven't subscribed, check it out. Um, this is a video. I think a brother put it together or it came off of TikTok. But let's see. Let me see if I can pull it up. Air Force Base. The, these cigar uh, uh, shaped ships were over a mile in length. One of them landed on the uh, uh, airport landing strip area. When it touched the ground, it created an earthquake like about a 3.5 to It terrified everybody in the area. The back of this craft opened up, and several hundred young men with huge heavy weapons came out of two sides of the ship and formed a uh, protection line around the ship and the people at that Air Force base, uh, the commander, had a meeting with the individuals that were aboard this ship and this particular race that landed those ships and that are seen in these, these huge uh, cigar-shaped ships, they uh, are a black race. They look like African-Americans. They were about six, four, six, five. Talking about the angels. Okay, now this could be fake. This could just be a farce. But uh, there's many people who have uh, gave examples of what they saw. All right. But, you know, the, the we know the angels, all right, are when they come, they look like so-called black men. Those are our big brothers that, you know, um, ride these ships, these chariots. OK, now we know the, the powers that be have their left hand version of all of this. But on the right hand, the Bible speaks about the chariots of salvation. OK, the, the Hebrew word for chariot, marakab or rakab, means a riding swift. OK, so you think the Heavenly Father just blessed these devils with, you know, uh, airplanes and all of this, but he doesn't have his version of vehicles. Absolutely, he does. And that's going to be an aid in the deliverance of you Israelites, man. See? So why why, why do they think that they're going to uh, 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 suffer a threat from outer space? Because they know what's coming. As the brother put here, all right, uh, GMS 13 rulership 4, all right, 2nd Edges 2 and 3, go ye and ye, sh ye shall receive, pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened and the days are being shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Okay. So these things are all happening in the earth and these things are coming out because our salvation draw off nigh, man. These uh, uh, tight fitting black leather outfits on and the weapons that they came out of the ships with, they were huge, a uh, huge weapon. And if you've ever seen a, 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 a race of people that were conquerors that had never been conquered, they got this look about them of, of arrogance. That is exactly what these uh, uh, extraterrestrials had, and they informed these people at the American at this American Air Force Base that not only were they from a militaristic society, but they had. He said it looked like they couldn't be conquered. <laughs> Let's get the book of uh, Isaiah. Yeah, in Psalms 119 and 126, it is time for the Yahweh to work, for they have made void thy law. It's time. All right. These these people are losing it. It's going too far. But Isaiah 31. Uh, okay, so that war in heaven is speaking about when Yahweh Shah returns. Okay, they're, they're going to fight against them. 
Isaiah 31 and 3. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses flesh and not spirit. When Yahweh shall stretch out his hand, Yahweh shy, both he that help it shall fall and he that is help hoping shall fall down and they shall fail together. So there's going to be an accompany of nations. All right. At war <laughs> with the chariots when they return. Now, a lot of this, too, is preparing you for a mock return of the Lord where they're going to, you know, uh, put people in great fear through the threat of some aliens trying to invade Earth. And we know when we see that, it's going to be a farce. We're going to know when it's Yahweh Shai. We're going to know when, yeah, we're getting ready to get up out of here. We're going to know. But they're going to come with some stuff to bring about more and more control and eventually bring that charagma through uh, uh, scaring the shit out of people and all of these, uh, uh, you know, dimmicks and different things they're going to bring. All right. They, they have not stopped. All right. With the plethora of left hand enchantments to bring, you know, fear upon the people so that they can justify taking away your rights. All right. The Patriot Act all over again. We're, we're, we're witnessing that, but they're going to do that on a whole nother level. But at the same time, these things are being brought out because they know. All right. That the, the, what they're doing on Earth is against the most high. And they know that eventually the most high is going to send the angels. All right. And eventually he's going to send his only begotten son back. With the angels. OK. So U.S. Space Force General B. Chance Saltzman is the second ever top chief at this new military branch, which is, which is the sixth branch, the sixth, which is the number tied to this man branch of the U.S. military, the Space Force, which who put it into play? Donald Trump. OK, you best believe Donald Trump is uh, down with the agenda. All right. He's just being used in his whole, you know, left, right uh, paradigm so that they can come at righteousness. He was just a figurehead used. OK, it says created during his time in office. Initially, this effort was ridiculed by the media and the general population due to the, all the stigma attached to it. But Saltzman issued a concerning warning at the space uh, symposium in Colorado Springs this past week. It all happened right in the middle of all the activity. All right. Uh, related to unexplained aerial phenomena, UAP. All right. Which a lot of that stuff has been fake. OK, again, we you know, and we know chariots really show up. But again, they're putting, you know, objects in the sky and saying they shot them down and they can't find them. This devil's all over the place. That's taken place since the start of 2023. <laughs> he is convinced that the United States is entering a new era of space activity. The threats will be uh, vastly different. OK. Yeah, so. The new threats are not on Earth. OK, before you make any type of assumption, we need to make it clear that the general has never mentioned anything related to aliens. So what, what what's outside of the Earth? It's the angels, man. See, they're going to come with some alien garbage. Because we, what we read in Revelation, the 13th chapter, they blaspheme the angels. In principle, he is talking about a new era in human technology that has not been developed, that has been developing in space over the last decade, even further than that. Because when these chariots pop up, what they notice about them is they're one of these, uh, Edomites said, they're about a million, well, uh, thousands of years ahead of us in the technology that we had and the things that they're able to do. OK, and it's not technology, it's the spirit. OK, <laughs> it's the spirit, man. You've been blessed on the earth with the ability using technology and science to create particular things. And you've gotten very far. But the chariots, again. The chariots, as we just read in Isaiah, the, the uh, you know, uh, 31 and three. All right. The chariots are not flesh. See, Esau, it says the Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses, meaning their power, their technology is flesh and not spirit, meaning it has limitations to it. It was created by men 
all right, um, under the, the guise of the spiritual demon Satan to bring forth all of these things. You see that? So when the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that help it shall fall and he that is hoping shall fall down because in the book of Second Edgers, the 13th chapter, it gives you, we always bring it out, it gives you understanding, okay, on what exactly these devils are going to do when the Lord returns. Okay, and we, we never get tired of going into these scriptures, man, because this is heavy. Okay. Verse eight, and after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him, subdue Yahweh Shai when he returns, were sore afraid, yet durst fight. Okay, and lo, he saw the violence of the multitude that came because there's going to be Armageddon, war on earth when he returns. But these nations are going to stop the war they have with each other to fight against the second coming of Yahweh Shai. And he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. But I only saw that he sent out of his mouth that it had been a blast of fire. So it ain't going to be a, a, a struggle. It's going to be easy. Okay. <laughs> Verse 33 in the same chapter, when all the people hear his voice, which is the fire, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have against another, and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and overcome him by fighting. They're going to try to overcome the second coming of Yahweh Shai, all right, by fighting, okay? But there's a lot of propaganda surrounding this. But you best believe these devils know the chariots are coming, all right? Because everything that the prophets are sent to prophesy, all right, is not meant to sit on the page as we bring these things out, okay? Um, it's going to come to pass, okay? So, you know, within this article, all right, uh, they're, they're, they're talking about some sort of threat from the outer space <laughs> and the satellites are tracking them and all of this you know we don't have to continue um six former u.s officials claim to have worked on ufo crash retrieval and see the chariots of the lord ain't gonna crash maybe their creations crash okay but the chariots of the lord ain't gonna crash man see that is a carnal aspect that's a carnal thing you know running out of gas crashing being able to be shot down you can't shoot down the chariots <laughs> all right so the, the, again these devils are everything that they're doing I guess that was the point of this news and prophecy everything that they're doing is preparing war against you know the uh the most high and his son okay and i had a bunch of other articles so what i'm going to do is end this one and i'm gonna just jump right into another news and prophecy and uh, hopefully y'all edified. On to the next. Shalom. <sighs>